My name is Catherine McAloon and um, I'm a vet in UCD's Herd Health Group. I'm here today on behalf of Animal Health Ireland to talk a little bit about calf health and wellbeing and the critical relationship that there is between animal health and animal welfare, um, given that we're on the mouth of, of another calving season and another spring. So really it's about reviewing some of the key principles where we can really strive to improve calf health um, and in turn improve calf welfare. And I guess the first thing that we want to talk about really is about what is it and how we define calf welfare and, and that can be difficult and, and good calf health um, has many different measures. If we look at measures of animal welfare we can look at animal based measures um, where we actually you know look at morbidity, mortality rates, treatment rates, growth rates and so on um, which a lot of farmers might do subconsciously but it's important to, to really realise that um, those animal based measures um, of health can also be measures of welfare. Um, also there's environmental based measures on, on behaviour based measures and, and to discuss those in, in more detail um, uh, we can do at length but ultimately I suppose the point really for today is just to look at that we can look at the minimum legal definition of calf welfare in terms of freedom from hunger and thirst and, and all the other of the of the five freedoms or five domains um, which a lot of farmers will do um, intuitively because you know everyone's business is about getting the best out of calf rearing on, on the future of the herd um, but importantly, a few things I want to just really look at today is in terms of in preparation for the calving season coming ahead, how we can look at areas where we can improve calf health and welfare. So the first thing would be to understand that we record properly our morbidity and mortality records. So re recording how many calves, for example, are treated between birth and weaning for pneumonia or for scour, and obviously recording calf mortality, which has to be done anyway. And ultimately there's no real targets for those because we want as, as little as possible. We certainly would suggest if you're treating more than 10% of your calves for pneumonia or scar that there's performance being left behind and that there is areas for improvement. But um, equally well, calf morbidity and mortality are very crude instruments and there's so much more to, to health and welfare. But they are, there are something that we certainly need to know. Um, we've designed this board here and I suppose the key messages really are that all calves should be treated equally with um, dignity and respect. That healthy calves um, or happy calves and that everything we can do in our power to promote good calf health um, will hopefully promote good calf welfare on, on farms and in order to do that we've suggested a timeline in calf rearing and this is a time where we can look at the one two three four so pre-calving calf health starts with preparation of the cow for calving having them in the correct body condition score on the correct diet the correct facilities feed space and so on and if we're going to use scour vaccines that they're given to the cow in time so she has ample time to, to make those um, antibodies before calving then in the first hours after birth really and it's about looking at this time now in advance of the really busy calving season where we can look at colostrum management and, and the, the be all and end all of calf health really starts and ends with colostrum and it's so important that we get that right to be on the, on the right foot for, for calf health and I suggest that this is a time where all members of the farming staff can be briefed on, on a good colostrum protocol or that we come up with a farm specific protocol where um, a calf that's born one day to the next and maybe managed by different people all gets treated the exact same, gets the same amount of colostrum, that it's collected quickly, cleanly and delivered to the calf appropriately. In terms of the first days and weeks of life, then really that comes down to looking at um, systems in place where we can look at, at calf health. So looking at calf housing um, and taking the time now to measure our calf pens and floor space, what can I actually adequately stock? So if we think the minimum legal requirement is is 1.5 meters squared per calf then we're actually looking at our pen width now and saying an air, pen area and saying how many I can comfortably accommodate. Ideally we would aim for having two meters squared per calf and, and looking at then um, if for example I'm only carrying enough capacity to house 70 percent of my calves what would happen if anything would happen that I had to retain calves on farm for a week or two longer that we want to avoid adding extra calves into currently um, pens that are stocked at capacity and looking for some contingency plan and, and as well as housing, we're looking at what we're going to feed them for the coming spring, protocols for around how we're going to clean the equipment and clean the pens and so on, and that all staff are briefed and on, and on the same page.